moving right along, uh, you're, with your bending notes already, which I hope you are if you got this video, uh, you know, the bending is achieved by making sort of an e oo sound, you know, an e oo while you're inhaling. Okay, now if you've gotten that far and you can bend notes, that's great. Um, if not, I can't really help you with that. You just need to keep working on it and eventually you'll get it. You might want to try some of uh, some other videos, maybe David Barrett's harmonica class or something like that that would help you along the way. With that or even some books or maybe just practice. So, uh, but you'll get it. The What I want to talk about is more refined bending and getting half steps and stuff out. Now, you may already know that only holes one through six on the inhale bend on the harmonica and seven through ten bend as well but only on the blow okay so you want to learn your blow bends and your draw bends the reason you want to learn these is because this is the beginning of taking this out of the diatonic realm and into the chromatic realm in other words it's giving you more options musically so you can play what your guitar player plays and you could be the next Eddie Van Halen on the harmonica but you need to learn your bends first so um, Anyway, not every note bends the same amount. You know, the one draw, for example, only bends a half step. The two draw bends a whole step. The three draw bends a step and a half. The four draw bends a half step. The five draw doesn't bend a half step at all. It bends a little, but not actually a measured amount in terms of Western music. Six draw bends a half step. The seven blow bends like the five draw, not a half step, but just enough to make an inflection. The 8 blow bends a half step, 9 a half blow is a half step, the 10 bends a whole step, okay, on the blow bend. So let's like talk about what's that sound like, you know. That was a 2 draw starting from the whole step bend. You want to start getting that, okay, and... Okay, that was the three. Four. Five, you notice it didn't go down quite a half step. It's still useful. You listen to little Walter or Butterfield or any of them, they'll still play. So even though it's not a half step, it's still musical, okay? Okay? So bending is really a useful technique, as an understatement, for a blues or for any type of music if you want to take the harmonica to a more musical place, which is what this video is attempting to achieve. Uh, you, want to, you want to really work on your bending and really, really get it refined so that you're getting each note completely clear. Like, let's go back to the two draw bend. You can actually make a little tuh sound, ta ta ta, and uh, with by hitting your tongue against the front of your teeth, like that, you're going to actually add a little staccato to each note, and that's going to give it a little bit more um, definition in, of where that note is. Okay. Okay, so there you go. You know, I'm, I'm adding a little staccato. That's also going to help you with your rhythmic playing. You know, if you want to. Okay, it's a very rhythmic a way of playing harmonica. Junior Wells played a lot of staccato, and uh, and he did that by making that t sound. It also helps you define your notes. Now, you don't want to make a habit of it because you want to eventually have a smooth sound, too. I mean, one of the great advantages of the diatonic harmonica over the chromatic, for example, is that you can bend into a note. So you want to um, exploit that and take advantage of that and play a lot of...
Now, if you don't care for the way that sounds, chromatic might be a better instrument for you because that is really the true advantage of a diatonic over a chromatic. I mean, you know, that's the great thing about this instrument. And, um, or, you know, there'd be an advantage of a guitar over a piano or something is that you can, you can get those, those shapes. You can color your, your notes and shape your notes like that. Paul Butterfield played a lot by coming underneath the note. Just to play the two draw, which, you know, is the tonic, the one in cross harp, which is what we're doing. I'm using a C harmonica, by the way. I probably should have told you that at the beginning, but using a C harmonica. And I'm playing the two draw, which is the main dominant uh, note in the first octave, the tonic. Okay. And you notice I'm kind of coming underneath it, bending underneath it. I like really enjoy that sound. You know, I find it very bluesy and very pleasing to the air. It's very much just shadowing each note with a with a bend of some sort. A lot of people think, well, I don't need to learn overblows because I'm a blues player and I don't need those notes. Well, the fact is, is that both of the, all of the overblows can be used as blue notes in one way or another, okay, on one chord or another, and can all be effective in making your playing even more bluesy than you ever imagined, okay? So, let me give you a little example. Here's a common blues lick. Okay? You can play that same thing in the upper register by having an overblow of L. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking licks that I've, I've been playing my whole life in the bottom register before I learned, or the low register, but first octave, before I learned how to overblow, and I'm moving them into the second octave. This is opening up my playing more expressively, so I can actually call and answer myself in two octaves, which I, before learning to overblow, I couldn't.